Good evening, everybody. Keith here. Hoping everybody's having a good day, enjoying life, living life, loving life. I'm on tonight because we got a uh, a notice in the mail today about uh, the Companions uh, Medicare Medicaid eligibility. So we're going to hang out for a few minutes so I can explain something. And uh, anybody that's uh, here now, please feel free to share the video. Um, as always, share all the content and comments. And I'm going to post a PayPal link when I'm done. Please hit that and share some love. But uh, hoping everybody's, again, having a good day, enjoying life, living life, loving life. Please be sure to share. They are shadow banning me heavily. So, as I cruise around here, get to my information. Okay. All right. Mike, how you doing tonight? I believe it's uh, Henry is watching with us as well. I don't know who all is watching, but whoever's watching, greetings, greetings, greetings. Please feel free to share to overcome the shadow banning. You need all the help we can get, so please help each other by sharing. Um, Social Security. Let's talk about Social Security first. Social Security is a federal government program, okay? And then each state has its Social Security Administration. In order to operate the Social Security Administration, each state has a Center for Medicaid and Medicare Services. And it's called CMS, Centers for Medicaid and Medicare Services. Um, when you apply for the Social Security at the age of 18 and you fill out that SS5, like I said to you recently, if you don't do it correctly, you automatically are enrolled. It's an automatic enrollment if that, that form is not filled out correctly to qualify you as the beneficiary solely and nothing more then you become a partner with the Centers for Medicaid and Medi Med uh, Medicare. As the, the language makes you a partner. And therefore, you're the one that's giving out all the data elements that's putting all the liabilities on the record. That's what it's all about. And so what we have is a Social Security Administration taking a determination by a Centers for Medicaid and Medicare Services in relations to the information they see on the record to help alleviate Social Security Administration's responsibility of that record. So we actually have a right hand and a left hand at the state level. And neither one of them is really conferring with the information properly. And that's because the people on the other side, us, being indoctrinated, are filling this paperwork out without knowing what's going on. And that's similar performance as a trustee. And so that's actually what's ending up happening. But above and beyond that, what we've got here in our situation is my, my companion, like I said, uh, she's, she's a, uh, a retired um, public trustee. She used to work for the uh, public education system, despite how bad I dislike teachers. <laughs> Funny how that works out. Um, but like I explained in a video here last week in regards to the birth registration and how that all works, the Center for Medicaid and Medicare Services has an automatic enrollment for Medicaid when you fill out the SS-5. And depending upon what kind of employment you have, if you go into the service area of a public trustee where you're actually um, working for a government body of some sort rather than just working as a, 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 a uh, opening your own business as a restaurant or something that's in the public, but it's a private business. Whereas if you're a public entity running operations privately, but you're still a public entity in the public, then there's no way around it. You're a public entity, you're a public trustee. So she worked for her entire life as a public trustee. And now that she's retired, um, during when she first fell out the SS5 and then went to college, and got her degree and everything. That was all Medicaid. But once she got 
her degree and got into the field, all of a sudden she became Medicare eligible. Okay, Medicare eligible means you were on Medicaid and now you took on a trust of a government trust position and now you're eligible for government medical insurance instead of regular just everyday blow Joe civilian. Now you're a special civilian. Now you're actually contracting with the government. And so when they denied her her Medicaid, what they said Your application, your application for Medicare is denied. Excuse me? The application happened a long time ago, and it was already approved. You can no longer not, you, you can no longer deny the application. It's already on the record. So their language <laughs> is babble, Okay. So, then it goes on to say, say, your application for Medicaid is denied because there is a limit on the number of people who can be served. Now, what I'd like to point out here is I spoke a few times about the public trust and how it's a false trust because it cannot possibly operate based on the numbers. <laughs> You got 380 million people, 2% of them are the, the, uh, the quote, powers that be, and everybody else is on Medicare or Medicaid. So you got 2% of the people providing the benefit for 98% of the people, and that's a false trust. Can't possibly happen. Because what happens in reality is as, as people grow, they change from a beneficiary to a trustee to a grantee. And here we have... 68-year-old people, 65-year-old people on Medicare still as beneficiaries. Or reverting to beneficiary. See, on that Medicaid, Medicare record, she's a beneficiary. But in operations of giving out the data elements as a teacher for her work record and for the students' IEPs and gradings and stuff, um, Goodness gracious. I'm getting all kinds of data elements above and beyond the scope. But again, beyond that, let's get back to the real issue. <clears throat> the real issue is your application for Medicaid is denied. Point one, babble. Application's already been submitted. You have it on record. Because there is a limit on the number of people who can be served. Excuse me. That's not the way the law reads. Your policy might read that. And your policy might change over time because the numbers change over time. So you have to change your figures and say, well, we can't give this guy benefit because we don't have the money because money ha appears magically. So don't give me that bullshit. Okay? So let's talk about these numbers. Well, actually, we won't even need to talk about the numbers. Let's talk about the application. We won't need to talk about the numbers at all. Because like I said, the law doesn't mention numbers. The law, matter of fact, confirms that there is no effect to the Medicaid. So let's look at it. Because again, like I said, Last week I did a video on the birth registration process and we went over this. The default enrollment. It's a default enrollment. So if you don't do the SS5, you are default already in enrollment. Default enrollment is an enrollment process that allows a Medicare Advantage organization, Medicare Advantage organization, following approval by the state and CMS, Centers for Medicare, Medicaid and Medicare. So now we see there's, a, there's an agreement by the state and somebody else. Okay? That's the agreement I was telling you about. It's not Social Security doing it. It's CMS. Because CMS is the one that's handling all the data elements for the state, Social Security. To enroll unless the member chooses otherwise. So if you don't choose... On that SS5, that you're not a member, 
that you're not applying to become a member, but rather as to remain as the beneficiary, then the choice is a default because you didn't name the beneficiary and the application was taken as a member. A member of an affiliated Medicaid managed care organization. See, you are presumed to be the Medicare or Medicaid managed care organization by giving out the data elements because you give a name and address as an organization instead of just the number in lieu of the name and address. That's that resident identification. A resident is a federal, state, or municipal official or agent. Agent would be the Medicaid managed care organization giving out all the data elements to the record into its Medicare dual eligible special needs plan. When that member becomes newly eligible for Medicare. So in the case of my companion, as it states there, she was automatically by default enrolled into Medicaid. Went through college and everything. And then she got set up to become a teacher. And therefore, by that employment classification, became soon would be eligible for Medicare. So that was placed on the record at the time of employment in that capacity. Whereas the guy working at McDonald's ain't going to get Medicare. That's a federal government AB plan. And so when you get eligible, you're placed on the, on the B plan. As you go up the ladder, you become an actual federal official and not a federal agent. Now you become eligible for um, Medicare plan A. Okay. So she's on plan B, Medicare. And it's under the default enrollment, dual eligible, Medicaid and Medicare. And when she was fired from her job and they tried to press fraud charges, she automatically reverts to the Medicaid. Through all the confusion of being fired for supposed fraud, coming to find out she had health problems causing problems with her, 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 uh, Veins going up into her head that were clogging up and not allowing enough blood and therefore not enough oxygen and therefore not able to think properly. And she re inverted some numbers. And this is something that has been continuously growing since. So her cognitive abilities are diminishing. And this is what happens when you retire. It's part of nature. And this is why they love people that don't understand this because once it gets to that point then they can send them notices like this well you're 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 not eligible because the numbers say so and and your application is denied excuse me the application was filled out years ago and remember folks as a youngster you didn't have to go in every year and reapply did you so where is this supposed application that they're saying is being denied For Medicaid, you can't. Medicaid application is a default enrollment by the SS5. That's the application, and it's a default enrollment. Okay, so let's get on to the next part where they're really screwed. Mm -hmm. Really screwed. And this is why I look out for my companion. I love her with all of my heart. I will not let anybody mess with her. So that's one. Question one, what is default enrollment? Now, it tells us more information. Please see 42 CFR 422.66 C2. We go down to C2. And we're talking about default enrollment in MA dual eligible special needs plan. Conditions for default during an individual's initial coverage election period. Okay. That's what we're talking about. She filled it out when she was 18. Went to college. And that period while she was in college 
was the coverage election period. An individual may be deemed to have elected a MA special needs plan for individuals entitled to medical assistance under a state plan under Title 19. You guys all recognize Title 19 for, for single mothers, including a fully integrated, there's a lovely word, integrated, relative to integrity, integrity. Dual eligible special needs plan as defined in 422.2 offered by the organization provided all of the following conditions are met by the organization. Okay, at the time of deemed election, deemed election, that's the default. Deemed means default. The individual remains enrolled in, a, in an affiliated Medicaid managed care plan. For purpose of this section, an affiliated Medicaid managed care plan is one that is offered offered by the MA organization, Medicare, Medicare, that offers the dual eligible MA special needs plan or is offered by an entity that shares a parent organization. Remember I talked about Social Security and CMS? That's the sister companies at the state level. Now the Social Security Administration is also a, a, a sub organization under the parent organization known as the United States. Okay? That's why we go back to the birth registration in regards to the Social Security Administration and that SS5 enrolls you as one of the partners by accepting that offer as is without amending it. Okay? So let's go back to here. Question one was, what is a default enrollment? It says, what type of plan can apply for def default enrollment? Um, what is the state's role in default enrollment? Um, if a state is interested in pursuing default enrollment with the DSNPs in their state, what are, are its next steps? When does a, when a DSNP applies to CMS for permission to conduct default enrollment, how can it demonstrate state support for default enrollment? So it's telling you they have to have state support. How does a state share data on upcoming Medicare eligibility with the M Medicaid MCO? What are the challenges with identifying individuals for eligible for default enrollment. The key challenge for states and plans has been to identify, I'm sorry folks, I know I, I don't like being shaky, so let's see if I can get it up here. Okay, so we have the key challenge the key challenge for states and plans has been to identify upcoming medicare eligibility for medicaid plan members via cms data files in time for the plan to meet the default enrollment notification deadline Example, for sending affected beneficiaries notice of pending enrollment 60 days prior to the enrollment effective date, which is the first day of the month the beneficiary is eligible for Medicare, Part A, and enrolled in Medicare, Part B. So now she's become enrolled in Medicare, Part B, still has Medicaid, and never qualified fully for Part A. So she's a Part B. This has been especially true for those about to become, uh, become eligible for Medicare based on disability. And like I said, she was fired 
filed for disability because of the medical thing. So the fraud charges never came about, of course, obviously. In addition, some states complete a redetermination of Medicaid eligibility when an individual turns 65 or otherwise becomes Medicare eligible. Okay. What I'd like to point out is that some states complete a redetermination of Medicaid eligibility. Well, the Medicaid eligibility cannot be affected if it's a dual enrollment. And I'm going to show you why. And they will admit it. And that is which debunks this part right here. When an individual turns 65 or otherwise becomes Medicare eligible. Because it goes on to state. To facilitate default enrollment, such Medicaid redeterminations would need to be completed far enough in advance of Medicare eligibility. So this is way back when she got her job and became Medicare eligible. So that the state can not only notify plans of MCO enrollees with upcoming Medicare eligibility, but also confirm that these individuals' Medicaid eligibility will continue. So if you guys learn how to read, you can see how the Medicaid eligibility was done on the application upon enrollment, or the, the Medicaid enrollment was done upon application of the SS-5. And it, because that SS-5 wasn't succinct and specifying with a handwritten statement attached to it in affidavit form with your signature on it, clarifying the distinct differences so that you're not enrolled as a member, but that you only qualify for benefits. Because once you enter into it as a member, of the offer, you now become that medical official that's giving out the medical details. That put a liability on that record. And again, that's because you're using a name and address instead of the number in lieu of the name and address. See, again, that's part of that correction of the SS5. And through my research, you'll see I've done some videos on that and explained how, how to correctly fill it out. And that should be done and taught to the younger generation. But as far as correcting it, you really only need to correct it with an affidavit. You don't have to fill out a new one. You just correct the record as it is because you're already enrolled in the dual eligible Medicaid and Medicare as a beneficiary. But the construction is on the other side that because you're using a name and address, you're operating as a trustee. And therefore, the similar things are going to happen if you, is if you're operating as a trustee, you're going to be treated like a trustee. Whereas if you act like the beneficiary at all times by knowing it, that's the true benefit of a beneficiary is the, the benefit is the knowledge. It's not the, the money that they suppose, because if you realize the money and how it's used, the real benefit is not being involved in the system at all. And being able to learn how to conduct yourselves appropriately face to face with your fellow man, instead of having to depend on somebody else to pay for your fuck ups. Because that's what it is. It's just a big insurance scheme. If you fuck up, uh oh, somebody's going to charge you. Well, you better have a way to pay them. You better have a way to a way to repent. And it's got to be a military script of repentance. It's not the way he works. He doesn't keep any records. And you're not supposed to be keeping records either. So when it comes to their records, make sure you know how they work. So that when, when they write you babble shit, your application for Medicaid is denied. It's not an application. The application was done a long time ago. You're trying to make a redetermination that says it's confirmed. Um, Medicaid eligibility will continue. So your redetermination can't just dismiss the Medicaid eligibility. Can't do that. It's already been confirmed that it will continue. 
And that's in your own words. So that's all I'm going to point out to him. It's going to be a nice short little thing. Short, Like I tell people, you don't have to do all this research and, and, and fill out an 89-page perfect affidavit. It doesn't work. They don't read them. You give them a nice little letter with a couple little... And it even tells us on here, you have the right to appeal. Okay, And in that right to appeal, it tells us, you can complete an appeal electronically at... And then it gives you an email address or a, a, a government dot, a, a dot gov site. Or write a letter telling us why you think a decision is wrong. Or fill out an appeal and request for hearing form. So you can appeal it electronically, you can appeal it on form, or you can just write a letter. And see, when the police ask me anything anymore, <clears throat> my response is, I'm, you're not going to get anything about me, from me. You need to go to a teller. You need to go to a teller. Someone that can give you value in those data elements. So there are only certain places that you should be a teller. And like I tell people, you coin your words or purse your lips. So if you don't know how to put it back to where it was, to dismiss their illegitimate redetermination based on there is a limit on the number of people who can be served. That isn't what this says. There is nowhere, nowhere in here, nowhere in their codes will you find anything about population being a determination for eligibility. Nowhere will they tell you, well, once the population reaches this much, or once so much, so many uh, uh, applicants have been filed, no more, no more can be accepted. They're going to accept all the applicants, and they're going to make a default determination that's going to automatically qualify you because they have to protect the general welfare. It's a must. That's constitutional, and that constitution is subject to the international constitution known as the Universal Postal Union. So either way you look at it, these people are just fools. And this is why we need to learn the concise construction of the concise language being used. Let no tongue prosper against you. So when they write it succinctly, and then they turn around and want to write this tongue, we straighten the tongue out. We straighten the tongue out. We only wish we had a way to straighten that sucker out and sew it back together so it's not a twisted, forked tongue. I wish I could help them out that way, but that's a medical procedure I can't do. The medical procedure I can do is coining my words so they can put the shit back in the purse. Because that's what they're doing is they're digging out of the till. They're trying, to, they're trying to present paperwork in violation of the Paperwork Reduction Act because of their incompetence. They shouldn't be issuing stupid shit that says, well, we have to deny you because the numbers say so. Well, you've been magically making money appear all of this time. You can magically make the money appear now, you dumbasses. Because as we discussed here also in another recent video I did about the Hawala, Hawala means trust. And when they're dealing in that trust, and they're just making electronic transfers of figures on electronic form and there's no paperwork, and then they want to turn around and send out paperwork that says they can't transfer the digital elements. That's just pure babble. That's why I urge also people to get comprehensive of this electronic form. And realize what's happening. They're trying to get rid of it's a book burning. Literally a book burning. They want people to become dependent upon this electronic system and feel that it will always be there. One day the power is going to go out. What are you going to have for your definitive paper documents? Are you going to have your own library? Are you printing this shit off 
so that you don't have to always refer to electronic form and use that little find button so you can find one word or are you printing it off and using it as, as a library so you can establish by reading it over and over again a foundational database here of reason and logic through all the material that you read because that way when you see shit like this you well that's babble and that's what it's going to take people See, these guys aren't going to do it. These guys are, you're paying these guys to do this shit. And this is what they do to you. When you get older, yeah, you might think it's fine now. You, you're working at the bank and you're going to have a good Medicare uh, retirement plan and all that. But when it comes down to it, even the banker, when he turns 65, 68, hmm. And he's done and his cognizance, cognizance is all, all, all wacky. Oh, we got to take that shit. He won't be able to handle it. Blah. And so then they start digging in the top in the pockets of material things and taking them by prohibiting the data elements to be transferred because well the numbers just don't add up. Folks, the numbers ain't never added up. It's the words. You're all worried about the name when it's the numbers. I keep telling you it's the numbers. The numbers do not add up. And tell them to fuck off. You're going to quit sending stupid shit like this. You're going to learn. Because people like me are going to educate you. Now granted, I guarantee you when we get done dealing with these people on this issue, we'll have it solved. But again, there's 380 other million people out there that they're not going to do a fucking thing for them. Why? Because they're not going to say automatically, oh, goodness. We've been doing it wrong all this time. We better kick ourselves in the ass and start doing it right. They're not going to do it. They're just doing their job. And as long as they've got people out there that are gullible enough, they're going to keep doing it. So when it comes down to this digital system, you're going to transfer the shit. You don't need to send this document. All you got to do is act in, within the hawala, within the trust, and do your damn job. If you think this is doing your job, you're violating the Paperwork Reduction Act because you're causing me to have to do more paperwork. That you're going to have to respond to in definitive paper form through the Postal Service. Because I'm going to put you to the test. So anyway, think about this, people. Do not let them get away with it. Learn how to read. And you can... And, and they put one sentence. One sentence. One sentence. Your application for Medicaid is denied. And that's impossible. The application for Medicaid was already made. And now you're telling us that you can make a redetermination. And nobody their entire life has filled out application after application after application every year. We haven't been re filling out new applications. We made the one application. And now they're trying to tell you the Aurora application for Medicaid is denied. Decades later? You're, the numbers don't add up. You're missing some time there. So again, I'm going to read it. In addition... Some states complete a redetermination of Medicaid eligibility when an individual turns 65 or otherwise becomes Medicare eligible. Like I said, she was Medicare eligible when she started working as a teacher within a public trust to facilitate default enrollment such Medicaid determinations would need to be completed far enough in advance to or in, in advance of Medicare eligibility. So when she got the job, she became Medicare eligible. So that the state can not only notify plans of MCO enrollees with upcoming 
Medicare eligibility, but also confirms that these individuals' Medicaid eligibility will continue. Period. They cannot. After confirming that the Medicaid eligibility will continue, make a redetermination based upon your application being denied, and all of a sudden now the numbers don't add up. Well, then I suggest you learn how to read and do math. Maybe you should go back to school. It's just silly, people. It's just freaking silly. So again, when I get done, I'll post these links, or at least the appendix here to the CMS. I posted it in my birth registration video here last week as well. Um, but I'll post it again with this video so you can get familiar with it, folks. Do not let them get away with this shit. When you filled out that SS5, you were Medicaid eligible automatically. It was a default enrollment. All you got to do is correct the capacity of the enrollment. The default allowed you put uh, uh, place public liabilities on the record when it shouldn't have. And again, that goes to the using the number in lieu of the name and address. Because if you use a number in lieu of the name and address, then you can put a number down, and then you can sign it, and then for the name and address, send it to the fucking Social Security Administration. That's the name and address. You're the beneficiary. They're the trustee. That qualifies the separation. Think, people. Of course, in order to think, you got to have a foundation of true knowledge. So you have to start doing your research. So again, I'll post that link. I'm going to post my PayPal button and have faith. But I'm going to let you know it's disheartening that people don't hit that PayPal button. It's also disheartening that people don't use this information and step up like I'm doing and putting them to the test. You need to start learning this stuff so you can do that. While I still want you to hit that PayPal button and let you know that it's disheartening that people just don't touch it. I don't know whether you guys think I've got all kinds of money coming in through that button or not, but I don't. And it would be greatly appreciated. But at the same time, that's not going to determine any... It's not, it's not going to give me a redetermination of what I'm going to do. I'm going to still do this. I'm still doing it. But the whole purpose of me doing it is so you can do it yourself. Again, I can I can give a man a fish and feed him for a day. I can do this video and, and you'll watch it. Or I can teach a man to fish and he'll feed himself for a lifetime. Or I can teach a man to fish and show him the importance of my education in passing it along so that when he learns how to fish, he can not only feed himself for a lifetime, but he can also feed other people by giving them a fish in his abundance of fishing and teach other people how to fish. And that's the importance of what I'm doing here. If anything, if you don't hit that PayPal button, if you don't hit the share button so others can learn, at least feed yourself with this for now. And maybe that hunger pain will come back again when they come after you. I hope it doesn't take that. But that's the kind of world we live in. Bigger fish eat the smaller fish. Quit being a fish. So again, I'll post those links. I'll post the PayPal button. And I love y'all. I hope you share some love. Um, if not, oh well. I'm already loved the way I'm supposed to be. And I'm going to love you the way I'm supposed to love you. And that's not that tender and kindness and caringness. It's what's true. If you don't like it, it's okay. I don't care. Because again, like I said, I'm still going to keep doing this. So in the meantime, remember, if it wasn't for you guys, I wouldn't be doing this. God bless. I do love you. Have a great day.